Hi, in this video, I'm going to look at the pros and cons of investing in gold. I know that a lot of private investors really like investing gold. A lot have made good money from investing in gold. So it's well worth looking at this topic. So let's dive in with the big plus points for investing in gold. I think one of the most important is gold is seen as a good store of value. It's almost a sort of cultural or psychological thing that humans for many years, hundreds if not thousands of years, have seen gold as a good place to store your wealth. And I think leading on from that, gold appeals often to people of a sort of libertarian bent because they see gold as an asset that's free from government interference. If you put your money, all your money into cash, there's the risk that the worth of that cash could fall if the government, say, prints a lot more money. That'll devalue the worth of the currency and your cash. Whereas with gold, the government at best can only have relatively marginal influence with the central banks buying and selling gold. That's the only way governments can, it can influence the gold price, and it's relatively small. So people like the way of storing their wealth, keeping it away from anything that the politicians might do. Another big plus point for investing in gold is that it has performed very well as an investment over some periods. And recent history has been one of those periods. If you'd invested a thousand pounds in gold in 2000, it would be worth roughly 3,600 pounds now. So it's been a very good performing asset in recent years. And one of the reasons why gold has done so well over the last decade or so has been demand from China and India. Obviously, those have been economies that have been growing fast and the cultural psychological attachment to gold is very strong there. So you've had lots of people who have become newly wealthy in those countries and they've decided to put a lot of their wealth into gold. That's an asset they trust. And in fact, many people in China and India have just been buying gold bars and either keeping them in the bank or actually in their homes. So that's been another good support. Then I guess it's possible that if humans sort of completely changed their psychology and said, we're not interested in gold anymore, the gold price wouldn't fall all the way to zero. It would fall a long way, but it would still, still have some value. And that's because there's always the demand for jewellery from gold. Now, the big reason is inflation. If you're worried that inflation is going to take off, gold is normally seen as a good asset to hold. And that really goes back to times like Weimar Germany, when there was hyperinflation, a lot of money was being printed by the government, gold held its worth more effectively. And of course, right now, a lot of people are thinking, well, governments, central banks have printed all this money over the last few years. That means inflation is inevitable in the short to medium term. That's not a view that I hold, but many people do. If you think that way, gold could be a good asset to invest. Last but not least, Gold can be an insurance policy against any crisis. And this is a reason here at Money Week, I think it's the main reason why at Money Week we think gold is a good investment. So if you've got a financial or a political crisis happening, you'll see the value of a lot of assets fall. Share prices falling and probably bond prices, property prices all falling at the same time. The beauty of gold is it's an asset that isn't necessarily correlated with other assets, to use the jargon. So if we go back to the 2008 crisis, in October 2008, Lehman Brothers went bust. We saw share prices crashing, but not so with gold. In two October 2008, the gold price started to move firmly upwards. So it moved in a different direction from other assets. So gold gives you that insurance protection that if there's a crisis, it probably won't lose money like your other assets and it may indeed go up. Now, let's look at the arguments against holding gold, the cons, if you like. I think the biggest one here is gold doesn't pay you an income. You know, if you invest in stocks and shares, most shares on the stock market pay you a dividend, and that's a big part of the return you get from the stock market. Gold's never going to do that. Secondly, there's this issue, and it's always worried me, that 
The only reason gold is valuable is because people say it's valuable. It's going back to this social cultural thing that humans just see gold as a valuable thing, as a good store of wealth. Now, fair enough, I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. It's much too ingrained in humanity that gold is a good store of value, but it's worried me in the past. It's worth bearing in mind. Final argument against uh, investing in gold is that there have been times where it's performed very badly as an investment. If you had put a thousand pounds into gold in 1980 and sold in 2000, your a thousand pounds would have fallen to about 170 pounds. So there are times when gold has done really well in the last decade or so. There have been times when it's done very badly. Don't assume gold is a one way bet. So, as I say, I think, you know, we've looked at the pros and cons here. I think the big pro here is the insurance point. It's a useful insurance against a future crisis. I've actually just made my very first ever investment in gold a couple of weeks ago, and I did it precisely for this insurance policy reason. So you, you could consider putting five, 10, even 15% of your portfolio into gold, just depending on your attitude to risk and depending on how long you think you're going to be invested. I think the, the longer you're going to be invested, the less need for gold, because if you stay invested for 20 years, even if there's a crash, it'll, the markets will probably recover. So you've got less need of the insurance you get from gold. So that's a really quick overview of how gold works. I'm going to do another video on how to invest in gold. So we will be putting that up quite soon. And I hope you take a look at that video too. And if you want to see part two, it'll only be available on the Money Week website, not on YouTube. So come over to moneyweek.com forward slash YouTube to see part two in this gold video series.